what is going on ladies and gentlemen it's your boy to back with another video i'm going to react to the indian space program which is uh isro or isro um humiliating nasa's budget let's check it out let's see how india humiliates nasa's budget it's gonna be crazy it's gonna be lit man everybody talks about nasa they talk about a lot of videos a lot of um you know these um nasa the spacex there's, there's a lot you know but let's see what isro does man humiliating nasa one of the biggest or one of the biggest or, or the biggest actually um when it comes to these space stuff let's check it out make sure to like share and subscribe more love to you guys let's go over the past several years spacex has received a lot of well-deserved praise and acclamation for their strides in lowering rocket launch cost Another organization, however, that isn't nearly as celebrated is India's space organization, ISRO. For decades, ISRO has slowly but consistently been driving down the cost of missions across the board, including orbital missions, lunar missions, and even Martian missions. So here's a story of the space underdog, ISRO. ISRO was officially founded on August 15, 1969, but the organization's roots stretch back decades. The earliest known roots trace back to Indian physicist S.K. Mithra in the 1920s. Mithra was most famously known for his experiments relating to ionosphere soundings. An ionosphere sounding is a telecommunications technique used to identify the most optimal radio frequency in a given area. Scientists use this information to form a better understanding of the upper atmosphere and Earth's near space environment. Aside from S.K. Mithra, we also had C.V. Raman and Magnet Saha who also completed a variety of space-related experiments throughout the 1920s and 1930s. We're doing some but the first now. major leap forward wouldn't come till the 1940s, when the Physical Research Laboratory and the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research were founded. These two organizations were founded by scientists Vikram Sarabhai and Homi Baba, respectively. Each organization leveraged nearby universities and research laboratories to conduct experiments relating to cosmic radiation, upper atmospheric studies, and high-altitude tests. In 1962, Vikram Sarabhai would convince Prime Minister Nehru to set up the Indian National Committee for Space Research. And soon after, India would begin experimenting with sounding rockets, which eventually led to the formation of ISRO, or the Indian Space Research Organization, in 1969. Okay. Since then, okay. ISRO has developed five different launch vehicles, with the first being the Satellite Launch Vehicle, or SLV. The SLV was a rather small rocket, with a payload capacity of only 40 kilograms. Despite its relative simplicity, it took ISRO seven years to develop, and unfortunately, the first launch in 1979 would end up filling nonetheless. A faulty valve would end up causing the rocket to crash into the Bay of Bengal just 317 seconds after launch. ISRO would give the SLV another try just a year later in 1980, and this time the launch would be successful. ISRO would successfully launch the Rohini RS-1 satellite into orbit, which made India the sixth country to reach orbit. SLV would go on to be used two more times with mixed results. The third launch itself was successful, but the satellite was launched in too low of an orbit, which caused the satellite to deorbit nine days after launch. The fourth launch would take place in 1983, and this mission would be a success, allowing ISRO to send an Earth observation satellite into orbit. Following the success of the SLV, ISRO that would attempt to make a more advanced version impressive. of the SLV called the ASLV. The ASLV was a five-stage solid fuel rocket that aimed to deliver payloads into geostationary orbit. Unfortunately, this rocket would end up being a massive disappointment. Throughout its lifetime, the ASLV would complete four launches, out of which three were failures. The first failure took place in 1987, when the first stage of the rocket failed to ignite after launch. Just one year later, ISRO would try again, but this time the launcher would end up disintegrating. The third launch of the ASLV would take place in 1992, and similar to the SLV failure, the satellite would be released into low of an orbit, and it would end up deorbiting. The fourth and final launch of the ASLV would take place in 1994, and this launch was actually a success. But given the checkered past of the ASLV, ISRO would decide to discontinue their rocket and focus their effort on the PSLV, or the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle. The PSLV was designed to deliver payloads into sun-synchronous orbit, and this rocket is what would really prove the capability of ISRO. Ironically, Bro, they kept the first on flight trying, of the PSLV in 1994 pushing. would end up being a failure. However, PSLV would end up having a streak of 50 successful launches. 
the PSLV is actually still used to this day and it has even put 342 foreign satellites from 36 different countries into various orbits. Wow. Up until this year, the PSLV actually held a record for deploying the most number of satellites into sun-synchronous orbit in a single launch. Aside from being an extremely reliable launch vehicle, the PSLV is also extremely cost efficient. Each launch is estimated to cost between 18 and 28 million dollars. Well estimate on the higher side and call it 25 million dollars per launch. The PSLV is capable of delivering 3,800 kilograms into low earth orbit, meaning that it costs $6,579 per kilogram. To put that into perspective, NASA's upcoming SLS rocket is expected to be able to put 70 metric tons into orbit, but the price tag per launch is over $2 billion. Sure. This means that the cost per kilogram is $28,572, which is over four times the cost of PSLV. That's crazy. Now, PSLV isn't nearly as cost efficient as the Falcon 9, which only costs $2,193 per kilogram, which is only about a third of the cost of PSLV. Nonetheless, the PSLV is way more efficient than options coming out from NASA today, and the PSLV was designed way back in the 1980s and 90s. Anyway, SRO's next rocket was the Geosynchronous Satellite Crazy. Launch Vehicle, or the GSLV. NASA this is being is humiliated an right version now. of the ASLV and has a payload capacity of 5,000 kilograms. The GSLV has thus far had 13 launches, out of which 8 were successful, 2 were partial failures, and 3 were complete failures. The GSLV is still used today to send larger payloads into geostationary transfer orbit. And that brings us into ISRO's final rocket, which is the GSLV Mark III. This rocket was developed in the early 2000s and is ISRO's most powerful rocket capable of sending 10,000 kilograms into low earth orbit. Similar to the PSLV, the GSLV Mark III is quite cost efficient in terms of cost per kilogram. The GSLV Mark III costs $51 million per launch, meaning that it costs wow. $5,100 per kilogram. So far, the GSLV Mark III has only had 4 launches and all of them have been a success. It definitely looks like ISRO has significantly improved their reliability compared to their early days. The money that is used anyway, is crazy. moving on to notable ISRO projects completed with these rockets, we first have a handful of satellite programs. The IRS series for instance consists of a group of satellites in sun-synchronous orbit. These satellites allow India to map and monitor natural resources such as fresh water. Another group of satellites managed by ISRO is the INSAT series. This group is located in geostationary transfer orbit and it provides telecommunications and broadcasting capabilities. Fun fact, INSAT is the largest domestic communication system in the Asia-Pacific region. ISRO also has satellites within their Guggen satellite navigation system and within IRNSS. These groups provide navigation, communications, surveillance, and many more services to ISRO and India. ISRO satellites are cool, but where it gets really interesting is their lunar and Martian missions. After China successfully sent humans into space in the early 2000s, India started to focus on trying to send humans to the moon. And the first step in this journey was sending a probe to the moon. In 2008, ISRO used a modified version of the PSLV to launch Chandrayaan-1 to the moon. This probe became the first probe to prove the existence of water on the moon. According to Chandrayaan-1, the lunar poles hold over 600 billion kilograms of ice. ISRO wouldn't attempt another lunar mission for quite some time. But the next attempt would be a massive step up compared to Chandrayaan-1. Chandrayaan-2 was launched in 2019 using the GSLV Mark III, and it consisted of a lunar orbiter, lander, and rover. The goal of the mission was to prove ISRO's ability to complete a soft landing on the lunar surface. Unfortunately though, a software glitch would result in the lander deviating from the planned path and crashing into the surface of the moon. ISRO is planning on trying the soft landing once again with Chandrayaan-3, which is expected to take place in 2022. Moving on to their Martian mission, Bro, we have Mongolian-1. In November it. of 2013, ISRO launched Mongolian-1 to Mars, and the spacecraft would successfully enter Martian orbit in September of 2014. This made India the first country to enter Martian orbit on their first attempt. What's even more impressive though, is that they were able to complete the entire mission at a record low cost of $74 million. To put that in perspective, Martian orbital missions completed by NASA generally cost hundreds of millions of dollars. For Crazy. instance, the Mars Odyssey mission cost Crazy. $207 million, the Mayfin mission cost $671 million, and the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter cost $720 million. Mongolian 1 was literally almost one-tenth of the cost of the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. Clearly, ISRO has made- This is mad, I'm telling you, this is crazy right here. Like, 
we all we all know that that um you know nasa is is the one you know and they're quite good at what they do obviously you know and there are advantages i guess there would be advantages to what they do as well you know how they're doing it and um you know their points of doing it and but you can see how israel is trying to make it efficient in every way you know when it comes to money when it comes to everything like in their first trials they're getting everything right that's crazy that's really really crazy man i mean india is just moving india is it's, it's uh getting better and better by the day and uh that's what you want to hear man that's what you want to see let's finish it up but they're just getting started looking forward isro plans to launch audit l1 to the sun in 2022 shukriyan 1 to venus in 2023 and Mongolian 2 to Mars in 2024. To the sun. They also have a mission to Jupiter planned, but we don't have the details of that mission yet. Looking forward though, the future of ISRO is looking especially bright as her budget continues to be increased year after year. ISRO's budget has tripled over just the last 10 years. This is in stark contrast to NASA, whose budget peaked 50 years ago. At the end of the day, ISRO is one of the most advanced space organizations in the world. They're not wow. quite on the level of SpaceX when it comes to cost efficiency, but they're magnitudes ahead of other government-funded space programs. Considering this, it's just a matter of time until ISRO places humans in orbit and eventually on the moon and Mars. Did you guys realize how cost efficient ISRO is? Comment that down below. Some rupees. Also, drop a like if you guys hope that NASA Mad. will soon focus on reducing Mad. cost. I love this video, man. Every bit of it. Every bit of this video was just crazy. I loved it. Um, I mean, you can see how, how India is moving forward, how India is bettering itself and just doing what's best for them, you know. And they do it quietly, you know. The world is focusing on all these other things and they're just there doing their thing, bettering themselves, moving forward and forward. And that is what we are here for, man. That is what we are here for. Istro. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be lit. It's gonna be one of the it's gonna be the best in in a few years, and you can see that these guys are determined to push it forward. Much love to you guys. Tell me what you think in the comments and give me more videos to check. Videos like these, videos that are just interesting to react to. You know, give me more 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 information. Like I've learned a lot from this. You know, India humiliating NASA. That is just lit. But anyway, much love to you guys. Uh, take good care of yourself. See you next time. Peace.